Hey everyone, this is Keith here, and today's video is going to be on the Shell Interpreter ZHS. Now, uh, I used to use Bash when I first started using Linux, and for the longest time I thought, you know, Bash is fine, you know. You know, my uh, Shell Interpreter doesn't need to be complicated, right? Uh, Bash is, simply works. Uh, and then I, have, I heard so many people saying, oh, you've got to try ZHS. ZHS is really good, and I started reading on forums on the features of ZHS and I started reading the Arch Linux wiki on it and uh, yeah I fell in love with ZHS after I started using it uh, I've been using it for a couple years now I don't even have my bash RC anymore I don't even know what happened to it that's how much I you know don't even care about bash anymore I straight up use ZHS uh, I do still use bash and shell scripts just for you know compatibility reasons because uh, that is the most common shell but yeah, I think if you want a serious working shell, uh, ZHS is the way to go. And I'm sort of going to, this video is just going to show me demonstrating some features of ZHS that I found incredibly useful and the main reasons why I switched. Uh, so yeah, right now I'm on the Arch Linux wiki page for ZHS and I'm going to link this into the description of this page because it is like incredibly helpful. It tells you all kinds of... Uh, functions that ZHS can do and it tells you all kinds of uh, commands uh, and just sort of config file examples. So anyone who's used Bash and started customizing it knows what a uh, the Bash RC is. So I'm going to go ahead and hop into my uh, ZHS RC and just sort of show you and sort of show you some of the things that uh, I've done to it to sort of uh, fine tune it for me. Now one and one really cool th good thing is I actually it uh, ZHS does globbing better or globbing however you say that and in, in this instance I have case and sensitive globbing on which means that um, just make a new shell down here if I start to type in a file name you see in, if you see on my uh, directory listing that Calibre library is uppercase well I can take I can actually type C A L hit tab and it'll actually show up the directory itself will actually show up in tab completion despite the fact that the C was not uppercase so it can instant so it can actually uh, uppercase it for us which is a very very unique feature that, that was one of the things where I'm like okay that's cool because I don't have to worry about hitting shift I can just type uh, C A whatever and just hit tab and bam done fine that's really really cool um, Another thing, and tab completion is the main reason why I started using ZHS because it's really good. Uh, another thing is uh, ZHS can uh, give you a menu of switches. And what I mean by that is a switch for a command is like, you know, usually when you hit dash or dash, dash, uh, you know, that's a switch, right? Is the uh, dash dash commands or dash commands. So yeah, and like this is what ZHS allows us to do. It allows us to hit. Uh, dash tab and actually go through the uh, list of switches and it's incredibly useful we can navigate with the arrow keys and with the uh, description option which is what this uh, line is right here um, it actually generates uh, descriptions on the right side uh, so yeah that's really really cool that's really really useful especially for programs like uh, FFmpeg because it just it just dumps pretty much everything I have noticed there are some commands that are missing but you get you know generally you get all you need right uh, and that's just super super useful uh, it's just that's just such a great feature I love that the tab completion is remarkable go ahead and close this window and go back to Vim here And we also have, uh, this is another cool thing, is you know how every time you type in a command, it, uh, the command goes into your uh, ZHS history file? So, and uh, I have options here that say ignore duplicates, uh, save no duplicates. And what that means is if I type ls and I type it again, only one of the ls's is actually going to go into the history file. So that way your history file isn't, uh, that way you're not hitting up because for every ls you typed. Uh, and that's super cool because you don't have the same instances of the same command 
in your uh, history. So that's really, really cool. Yeah, and it's just, and I also have a, a set option, because usually with Shell, or Bash, excuse me, I think uh, with Bash, every time you exit Bash or something like that, the commands you executed get written. I'm not entirely sure how it works. With Bash, it's been such a long time. But uh, with ZHS, you can actually sort of change this function. I have it set to where uh, when I enter a command, it automatically goes straight into the uh, history file. So if I type ls, it'll go directly into the history file, right? And I don't have to exit the shell for it to pop up in the history or anything like that. And that's, a, and that's neat because if I open a different shell, I instantly get that command in my uh, history, you know what I mean? And I'll have to like exit that shell just to get the... Uh, command to pop up under history so that's really useful and we also have things like rehash and rehash is cool because uh, it essentially whenever there's a new file created on the system or excuse me the path like the uh, path variable which is user ban or something like that but basically whenever I install a new command uh, ZHS with this line ZHS will automatically rehash the uh, tab completion meaning if I install a new program uh, and I start to type in the program's name, I can instantly, you know, tap complete it instead of having to restart the shell. So yeah, incredibly useful. Uh, this is just my key binding stuff. There's another thing I, I want to demonstrate. Let me find it. Uh, another thing I guess would be the prompts. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So this is my prompt right here, this line. Uh, let me... Uh, do it a little bit prettier. See right here. Highlight this line. Uh, that is my prompt. Um, nothing special, but one cool thing about ZHS is uh, you can actually change your prompts. Let me see here. You first have to come up here and actually auto load the prompt and it and all that. Um, and then once you auto load it, actually type it into the ZHS like right here. Then once you've done that, you can actually just Go ahead and typed in prompt into the ZHS command or ZHS interpreter, and then you know with tab completion you can actually cycle through a sort of list of pre-made prompts in case you don't want to you know uh, sort of customize your own and you might find one of these suffice. So this is for so for example if I type in prompt Zafram, hit enter it autom it immediately changes my uh, prompt theme to. Uh, the specified prompt so that's that's pretty unique um, I personally don't really use this a lot but uh, it is kind of useful right see so here we have fire and there are some uh, people even upload certain prompts and uh, like there's some like get prompts that like actually give you status of uh, when something has been committed or something like that uh, I personally don't use those I prefer a basic simplistic prompt but you know these are these are still pretty useful um, Another thing that you can do with prompts in ZHS is you can actually specify something to appear on the right side of the terminal as well instead of the left side. Like you see here, my prompt is mainly on the left side. Well, you can actually see if I can remember how to do this. Um, where is it? My prompt. Oh, there it is. I passed it. So if I do, I believe it's R. Prompt, and we could just do this. I'm just gonna do something really quickly. We're just gonna do host name. Let's see if that works. Uh, actually, that didn't work. I think it's our prompt, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, let's just try something simple right now. Why? Let's look. Let's consult the uh, ZHS page on this uh, da -da -da -da, prompts. There we go. Okay, it is our prompt. Hmm. Oh, I misspelled it. Uh, our. Okay, yeah, that's that's what's going on. Okay. Wow, that's silly. There we go. There we go. Okay, so now as you can see on the uh, right hand side of the screen, 
we actually have uh, some stuff being displayed and you can actually customize that to whatever you want um, and like for instance I have it set to my TTY but I can change it to whatever uh, let me see uh, host name oh. Oh. cap blocks I don't know why I have that key enabled no that's not it that's not the right variable host is good enough yeah, and you can pretty much just change it to anything you want. Uh, and that's pretty cool. You know, you, you, you sort of get, you can put all the, some stuff on the left, some stuff on the right. It's a silly thing, um, but I do know some people find that incredibly useful. And yeah, you know, this is the main reason why I use ZHS is because of all the customization op options. Um, and in particular, I uh, really like the... Uh, Auto completion options. That's what I really, really like about CHS is just being able to um, hit tab and get a uh, completion list of switches, and that's just super, super useful. And I that's the thing that immediately made me fall in love with uh, ZHS. I just absolutely love it. Anyway, yeah, this has been uh, Keith here, aka Ghost Squad 57, signing out.